Are you ready to math and mole? That is what we'll be doing in Unit 8 of our studies. So, I brought out the uh, math hat and asked our friend, Mr. Mole, to join us today. As a matter of fact, our friend here asked me to start you out with this problem. How many moles of water will be produced when 8 grams of hydrogen gas react with the oxygen in the air? Good one, Mr. Mole. Let's peek in on a couple of my students to see if they know what to do. This one is tricky. I know about reactions and I know about the mole, but this... It seems to be some sort of combination of the two. Absolutely. It is a combination of the two, Mr. Mole, which leads us to our study of stoichiometry. In this lesson, you will define the term stoichiometry, use balanced chemical equations to determine mole ratios, solve mole-mole stoichiometry problems, and solve mole-mass stoichiometry problems. Stoichiometry. What an impressive sounding word. But it is basically just the study of the math relationships involved in chemical reactions. One of the keys to your success in this unit is making sure that you are always working with a balanced equation. You will want to review this information from Unit 6 and get help from your local teacher if you need it. Stoichiometry is the study of the quantity relationships in a chemical reaction. Chemical equations must be balanced in order to work stoichiometry problems. Let's look at a balanced chemical equation and see what it tells us. Take a few seconds and use words rather than numbers and symbols to write the equation into your notes. 2mg plus O2 yields 2mgO. You should have written something like two magnesium atoms react with a molecule of oxygen gas to produce two formula units of magnesium oxide. Wow, Mr. Mole, that reaction covers a lot of chemistry. Atoms, molecules, formula units. Anyway, think about this. A mole is just a way of counting very large numbers of atoms, molecules, and formula units. So, we could just as easily have said two moles of magnesium atoms react with a mole of molecules of oxygen gas to produce two moles of formula units of magnesium oxide. Hmm. It seems that the coefficients represent the ratios of moles. The coefficients of a correctly balanced chemical equation represent the ratio of moles to the different parts of the reaction. In all stoichiometry problems, this mole ratio will be used to compare quantities of different substances involved in the chemical reaction. Cool, huh? All that balancing we did earlier is really going to pay off now. Do you wonder how chemists knew that the coefficients represent the ratios of moles? Probably by experiment, huh? Let's do an experiment of our own to see if we can verify this information. As we watch students perform the steps of the lab, fill in the data on the table provided by your local teacher. Did you get it? Now, let's look at some mole ratios. 
What is the mole ratio of aluminum to iodine? What is the mole ratio of aluminum to aluminum iodide? What is the mole ratio of iodine to aluminum iodide? In each case, you just had to look at the coefficients to determine the mole ratio. Now, let's try something a little trickier. If you start with four moles of aluminum, how many moles of aluminum iodide would be produced? You can probably figure this one out in your head, but don't. This is one of those cases where we are going to follow the method so you can see how it goes. Because from now on, the problems are going to get harder. Let's start by putting our problem into the good old question mark form. How many moles of aluminum iodide equal four moles of aluminum? Now it's time to use the mole ratios you've discovered. We're looking for moles of aluminum iodide, and we were given moles of aluminum. Using the coefficients from our balanced equation, we will use the mole ratio as a conversion factor. Put two moles of aluminum on the bottom and two moles of aluminum iodide on the top. The moles of aluminum cancel. We multiply and divide to get four moles of aluminum iodide. Now you try a couple like this one. N2H4 reacts with N2O4 to produce N2 plus water. Determine the number of moles of N2O4 required to react with 2.72 moles of N2H4. Also, determine the number of moles of N2 that will be produced from 2.72 moles of N2H4. Local teachers, please pause the tape while students work problem set one. Now, I'll use the mole ratio from the balanced equation to convert from moles of N2H4 to moles of N2O4. I'm going to put two moles of N2H4 on the bottom so that the units will cancel, and one mole of N2O4 on the top. Now I multiply across the top and divide by the bottom to get 1.36 moles of N2O4. The next one is the same process. Using the mole ratio from the same balanced equation, I put two moles N2H4 on the bottom and three moles N2 on the top. I multiply and divide to get 4.08 moles of N2. Mr. Mole says, that's not so hard, is it? The best advice I can give you as we work through this stoichiometry unit is to follow the method and let the units guide you. Now, we will move on to something a little more involved. Remember the problem the two students were trying to solve at the beginning of the program? Let's work through the problem keeping this advice in mind. Remember that you must work with a correctly balanced chemical equation in all stoichiometry problems. Start by writing the balanced chemical equation for this reaction on your note sheet.
Check your work. Then write your problem in the famous question mark format. This problem is a little different than the last couple because you are starting with mass instead of moles. The thing to remember is that the coefficients represent the mole ratio. So you must always have moles before you can make the switch. By that, I mean you start with information about one substance in the reaction, but you are asked for information about another substance in the reaction. To make the switch between these two substances, you will need to be working with moles so that you will be able to use the mole ratio. Let me repeat it because this is important. The mole ratio is the step you must use to make the switch when you are given information about one substance in the reaction and asked for information about another substance in the reaction. That's not a problem because you learned how to convert from grams to moles in the last unit using molar masses. So go ahead and put in the conversion fact to convert the 8.0 grams of hydrogen gas into moles. But don't multiply and divide yet because you're not finished. Don't forget that the question mark tells you what you are looking for. At this point, you will have moles of hydrogen gas, but you need moles of water. You just had to put grams on bottom and moles on top of your conversion fact. Now you just need to use the mole ratio to make the switch and convert from moles of hydrogen gas to moles of water. Now that you have what you're looking for, multiply and divide to get your final answer. Four moles of water. How do you like that? A problem that sounds so challenging is really quite simple if you follow the method. I want you to try a couple more before we call it a day. After you've had a chance to work them, I'll be back to go over them with you. Your local teacher will put the following problems on the board for you so you don't have to try to copy them now. Remember photosynthesis from biology? As a refresher, carbon dioxide and water react to form glucose, C6H12O6, and oxygen gas. If 15.6 grams of carbon dioxide react, how many moles of glucose will be produced? How many grams of carbon dioxide must react to produce 0.25 moles of glucose. Local teachers, please pause the tape. The first thing you needed to do was write a balanced equation. You should be a pro at that by now, so I'm sure you balanced it correctly. Next, you set up the first problem in the question mark format. How many moles of glucose equal 15.6 grams CO2? Of course, you let the units guide you through the problem. The first step is to use a conversion factor to convert grams of CO2 to moles of CO2. Put 44.0 grams CO2 on the bottom and one mole CO2 on the top. Now that we have moles, we are ready to make the switch. So the next conversion factor is the mole ratio from the balanced equation, our key for making the switch. We put six moles CO2 on the bottom and one mole glucose on the top.
since moles of glucose is what we're looking for, we are ready to multiply and divide, and we get 0 0.059 moles of glucose. That wasn't so hard. Now, let's work our other problem. How many grams of CO2 equal 0 0.25 moles of glucose? Since the problem gives you moles, you are ready to make the switch right from the beginning. Using the mole ratio, you put one mole of glucose on the bottom and six moles CO2 on the top. Letting the units guide you, you next put one mole CO2 on the bottom and 44.0 grams CO2 on the top. Since grams of CO2 is what we're looking for, you multiply, then divide, and get 66 grams CO2. You'd better put your math hats on for a few minutes while you take the chemistry quiz.